Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. With us, a uh, guest that I have had on before. And you know, some things, some things that people say just stick with you. And one of the things he said is that, uh, you know, we've been told uh, the money supply is X. Well, what happens if it's X times two or three or four? And uh, that person I'm talking about is Rob Kirby. Uh, Rob Kirby of Kirby Analytics. Rob Kirby. Thanks for joining us today on usawatchdog.com. Pleasure to be with you again, Greg. Uh, l let's talk about this $21 trillion. I mean, I just had a former Fed head on, and nothing wrong with her. She's a very nice person and very smart. But, uh, but uh, her, like a lot of people, I mean, even money managers I know, don't realize there's $21 trillion printed. Extra, additional $21 trillion. This is real money. This is Dr. Mark Skidmore. This is a team of PhD level people at Michigan State University that came up with this. Um, but most people, and I mean important people around the world, don't realize it's there. Well, they don't want to believe it, Greg. They don't want to believe that at least, at least 21 trillion extra dollars has been created out of thin air and it is siloed and I would have it that it's siloed in dark places like the Exchange Stabilization Fund, the secretive adjunct to the U.S. Treasury. And uh, I would also contend that uh, this enormous cache of dark money is exactly what is used to, uh, let's just say, do dirty tricks, like, like rig the precious metals market, because that's a very expensive operation to carry out because uh, on its face, it's not a sustainable sort of thing. And the, the reason the money has been created, Greg, which I think a lot of people, even who are investigating it, might, might be failing to recognize. If, if you look at the work of Chris Martinson, um, who produced a, a, a video series on his site uh, called The Crash Course. And what The Crash Course lays out, Greg, is the life cycle of fiat money with compound interest. And the US fiat dollar is, a, is an example of fiat money with compound interest. And, and what Martinson cleverly lays out in his, uh, in his reporting is that the, the, the growth curve of fiat money is generally speaking, very gently sloping curve upward to the right until it reaches an inflection point. And once that growth curve hits the inflection point, it goes vertical, goes like a hockey stick, and it goes straight up. Well, the people running the US fiat dollar at the Treasury and the Fed, they're very aware of uh, the, the shortcomings of fiat money because they've studied it and they've modeled it to, to the nth degree. And they knew years and years ago that they were going to hit a point where the amount of money that had to be put into the system would grow vertically. And th this is why they fraudulently created and siloed 21 trillion, at least 21 trillion extra dollars. Because th this, this is the money that fuels the vertical growth uh, component of the, <laughs> of, of the curve and, and, the, and the life cycle of the US fiat dollar. And I find it amazing because many mainline economists have said to me over the years when I've made claims that the only way that this experiment, uh, this Keynesian experiment, uh, the fiat US dollar, the only way it could logically end is in a hyperinflation. And people have said to me many, many times over the years, well, Kirby, where's the money going to come from for this hyperinflation you talk about? Well, the reality is, Greg, the money's already been created. The money has been created and it's been siloed. And the money is being put to use, which is which, which by the way, is why America never seems to run out of money. Even, even if the government gets shut down, uh, the stock market never collapses. Bond, uh, U.S. government bond auctions never fail. Uh, because because officialdom or the financial elites, the stewards of our uh, financial system, they have at their disposal uh, 
tens of trillions of dollars that they can marshal up at a moment's notice to uh, engage and uh, and and uh, you know basically carry out any any dark act that they wish to do. And amazingly, if you Google the Exchange Stabilization Fund and you read about when it was created in 1934, and when you read when you read about what its mission statement and its purpose for being created was, it was to basically to defend uh, the U.S. dollar and to make sure that the U.S. dollar was uh, maintained its position as the as the key currency in the world. So I mean what's occurring and what I've just described is completely and utterly uh, uh, in keeping with the definition of and why the Exchange Stabilization Fund was created in the first place. And, you know, it's amazing how nobody in officialdom, nobody in Washington and nobody on Wall Street dares talk about the Exchange Stabilization Fund because basically everything that the fund does is considered to be in the national interest and hence it's basically considered to be top secret and talking about things that are top secret or uh, classified uh, in nature uh, makes you about as welcome as Edward Snowden which is why nobody dares talk about it and uh, th this is what is, is infecting the world this is the source, this, this orgy of, of money creation, uh, which foreigners uh, are becoming very aware that this has indeed occurred. And this is why foreigners uh, are, are really being, are acting quite fed up with uh, US dollar hegemony uh, that's being imposed on the world. I mean, a, as you said in the beginning, we don't know what money supply is. We, oh, no, you, we, you, you said that. Yeah, but but I mean, I mean, you you sorry, Greg, you you reiterated that at the beginning of the interview. All right, but that was that's a, I'm telling you, I that's one of those things that you hear that you say to yourself, oh my gosh, that's that's the truth. Sure, but I mean, listen, Greg, uh, in in the in, in the U.S. experience, the keeper of the monetary aggregate data is the Fed in St. Louis. So they, they give us reports on money supply, what M1, M2, M3, uh, actually they don't report M3 anymore. Uh, you have to go to the likes of uh, uh, John Williams of shadowstats.com to get anything approaching an accurate uh, M3 tally. But my, my, uh, my argument or my point is that it's all garbage because we don't really know what money supply is. M money supply as, as reported by the Fed doesn't include this 21 trillion uh, at least, which we know was created fraudulently. And we know it was created because it went through the books of the Department of Defense and HUD. And that's using the government's own numbers. And it was after Skidmore appeared on your show uh, in December uh, 2017, it was, it was literally about a week after Skidmore made these revelations on your show, Greg, that the White House ordered a complete audit of the Department of Defense, yeah, something yeah. that's never, never been done before in the history. Of the Department of Defense, yeah. Trump uh, knew about the twenty-one trillion federal deficit, but he darn sure didn't know about well, the uh, about the twenty-one trillion that they printed up extra. Yeah, well, you know, he didn't know the reality that. is this money this money was created. This money is siloed, and nobody wants to talk about it, Greg. But this this is a huge, huge, huge issue. And like I say, this, this is why we have seen the likes of the German foreign minister, uh, I believe it was a week ago, and if it wasn't a week ago, it was two weeks ago. Uh, the German foreign minister said we need an alternative to the US dollar for international trade settlement. Because, uh, I mean, listen, friction between Germany and the United States has been growing over the last number of years. And uh, this, is, this is something that you and I have talked about before. Uh, it began a number of years ago with Germany first asking the Federal Reserve if they could come and audit uh, their gold uh, reserves that were on deposit at the New York Fed. When Germany asked the Fed if they could uh, audit their gold, just come and make sure it was still there and see it and inspect it, the Fed told them no. And after the Fed told them no, the Germans then said, well, maybe we'd like to have some of our gold back. 
And basically, the Fed at the time said, uh, no, you're not having any of your gold back either. Um, things progressed, and uh, German regulators began investigating uh, the handiwork of Deutsche Bank, who was a big player in the, in the derivatives market, uh, with, with uh, doing, doing uh, interest rate derivative trade, massive amounts of it, with the Exchange Stabilization Fund. Uh, German regulators literally went berserk when they found out the, uh, the degree or extent to which Deutsche Bank was dealing with the U.S. Treasury, and they ordered them to stop. And uh, what we've seen since roughly the 2013-14 uh, timeframe, um, Deutsche Bank's derivatives book has shrunk dramatically. Uh, Deutsche Bank has admitted to rigging the gold and silver markets and has withdrawn from those markets completely. Um, and and with with German regulators taking taking Deutsche Bank out of the derivatives uh, uh, daisy chain, uh, the American response to that, I would have it, was the Environmental Protection Agency came down like a ton of bricks on Volkswagen and charged them with uh, uh, having diesel emissions that were not, not compliant. Um, and, and of course, the day, the day that uh, the EPA uh, announced uh, th th these huge fines of wrongdoing against Volkswagen just happened to be three days after Volkswagen had opened a new engine plant in Russia. Yeah, you, you, uh, you brought that up the last time. Uh, that's a yeah. Uh, but I mean, and, and now we're seeing, and now we're seeing a continuation of this same inf inflamed situation with uh, the recent uh, uh, statement by the German foreign minister that they, you know, the world needs a new payment system for international trade that is not American centric. And, you know, I'll tell you folks. Uh, the reality is the world already has an alternative system. China's uh, invented their own system uh, called the uh, CIPS, China uh, in, uh, Chinese Interbank Payment System, and this is a uh, this is a parallel system which is non-U.S. Uh, doesn't require any U.S. involvement. So. The, the world the world is adapting and adopting to uh, means of doing and settling international trade without the dollar. So for anyone who thinks, because many people will say that to me, they'll say like, Kirby, you've been talking about this stuff for how many, how many years and what has changed? Well, let's just say a lot has changed. A great deal has changed. New systems, non-dollar, uh, uh, required uh, have been built. Uh, they're ready to go. Switches need to be pushed or pulled or flipped. And and you know and I'll just tell you folks the day the day the world stops needing dollars to buy oil, uh, we could see an awful lot of dollars return home to America. And the day the dollars start returning home to America, America's going to have an inflation problem. Uh, uh, and, and it's going to be quite a juggling act to see to see uh, American authorities deal with it. So, what do you uh, what do you make of in, important people not really understanding about this twenty one trillion bucks that's additional? What do you make well, of that? That a lot of people. And I don't mean they're, these are not dumb people that I talk to. I mean, money managers, they're like, what? With 21 additional trillion dollars. You know, former Fed people, what? Huh? And I don't think they're, I don't think they're hiding it. I think they don't realize it's there. Well, it's, it, it's very uncomfortable for, for people to talk about this, Greg. No, nobody wants, nobody wants to be, to be labeled as a conspiracy theorist. Nobody wants to be, uh, basically nobody wants to wear goat horns. No, nobody, nobody wants to be the, the, the person who is, who's out of this. Um, and, and the very nature of this stuff, as mentioned earlier, it, it's, this, is, this is the, the stuff that, of national interest. This is what it's made of. And nobody wants to be mouthing off about state secrets. 
And this is a, 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 a true secret of, I'm going to say, a secret of the deep state. And this is why everybody avoids it at all costs. Yeah, Trump, Trump so didn't know no, about this. He didn't, he, he, he didn't know about this. He knew about the 20 trillion we were indebted, but he probably went berserk and went, what, there's an additional, excuse me, how much? Well, if, I mean, I bet if you people in his own government didn't know about it. Well, you know, people people on his team may, may very well not have known. His own cabinet, his own team's what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. If you, but Greg, if you recall back, back when uh, Trump was still president-elect, and it was, I believe it was the, either the day after or shortly after he had become president-elect, he went to visit Obama at the White House and when he uh, he did a, an impromptu uh, press conference, uh, I believe in the Oval Office with with Obama, and uh, this was a this was a meeting that was supposed to take no more than fifteen minutes. It, it ended up taking, I believe, forty five minutes. And uh, I mean, Trump, when he was facing the cameras after this this closed door meeting, he looked absolutely stone faced, and he looked like he had just seen a ghost. And when, when he was when he was questioned by the media, he he, he spoke of uh, things. There were some things that he learned uh, that uh, he didn't know uh, that were very concerning to him. And he looked he looked absolutely frightened, in my view. And uh, well, I what just do you wondered, think that was? Well, it, you know, he might have he might have been told he might have been told the the reality. Of, of how the financial system is really uh, MacGyvered together, and he might have been he might have been told or let in on the, uh, the you know the secret here. He might have been shown the secret handshake that you know the world's really held together by by dark money, uh, uh, and the U.S. Treasury isn't really uh, put together the way he maybe formerly understood, and and he was probably he, he probably or might very well have been you know let in on the big secret. That the exchange stabilization fund really runs things, and it's all done uh, by covert means, because I, that, that to me would scare the living daylights out of anybody if they were let in on that for the first time in their life. Anyway, I, I heard the uh, shock me. I, I heard the uh, the head of a Credit Suisse. Because he's an African American or black guy, or whatever. He said he didn't see any problems in the emerging markets. He said everything's okay. That. Uh, well, we might have a short-term problem, but he thinks everything's okay. Is everything okay in Turkey, where they've lost 100% or half the value of their currency in one year? Is everything okay in Venezuela, where they're eating the zoo animals? Is everything okay? Well, you know, in Greg, Argentina. I, no, but Greg, I can I can just play along with this. Is everything really going to be okay in America when when people really realize how much money there really is in existence. When, when people realize, Greg, that instead of money supply being X, it's really 10X, is everything going to be okay then? I don't think so. Because once, once there's widespread acceptance that money supply is not X and indeed it's 10X, uh, 10X worth of money is going to come home to America very quickly. And that 10X worth of money is going to be buying anything that isn't nailed down and, and it might be buying things that are nailed down and we are going to get a hyperinflation greg there's absolutely no doubt in my mind it's not a question of if it's only a question of when could they just change the currency could they just say oh sorry we're not going to accept this we have a new dollar sorry could they do that would they do that um, sure they could and 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 if if really pressed, would they? Uh, they very well might. The only thing I would say, Greg, that if, if that were to occur, uh, uh, the notion that there wouldn't be a hyper—I mean, there there would still be a, a mad rush for people to try and get rid of the dollars that are currently in existence, dark and light. And if you think that a new currency is going to come into existence out of out of out of nowhere. And, and that we're going to uh, miraculously uh, maintain close to zero interest rates, I think you have another thing coming to you. Because 
you know, when you when you basically when you assign zero rates to uh, of interest to to money, fiat money, uh, you're you're assigning a zero cost to capital. You know, and and human beings are human capital, and I don't know anybody who works for free, Greg. Do you? That's what zero percent interest rates really are. Sure, absolutely. Uh, what, 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 what zero percent interest rates really are, are getting people to work for free? Absolutely. What, what zero interest rates do, Greg, is they trivialize labor, they trivialize effort, and, uh, and basically it, it, it trivializes life. Because that's the way we keep score. When uh, this uh, big ball of uh, junk, uh, this uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, this extra twenty-one trillion, which Catherine also fits thinks it's it's probably an extra thirty trillion if you add up everybody else. Um, I you know I mean I'm I am stunned that people don't know big people, important people, money managers, people that work for the Fed, they don't know this is out there. I don't. I really think a lot of important people have no idea. That this well, is out there, it, and if a lot right. of important people don't realize, I, I tell my friends this is out there. They look at me like, I said, "Yeah, it's, it's, it's more than what they're saying." They look at yeah. me like I'm crazy. Hey, this You're is right. Doctor Mark Skidmore. Numbers that you could get off the internet, well, until they made it a national security issue. And uh, Michigan State University, a team of people that went, "Oh yeah, no, no, it's twenty-one trillion. Just these two agencies." Yeah, yeah, two agencies. So. What, what, many, what I mean, what, I mean, the first thing that has to happen, and I know we're beating the drum on this twenty-one trillion. People think, what are they? Why are they beating this twenty-one trillion, folks? It's double what they say of the national deficit, is, which is more than a hundred percent of GDP. So yeah. this is a big issue. This is the yeah. currency issue in the world. It ain't the lira. It ain't the peso. It ain't what's happening in Bitcoin or Dash in Argentina, whatever the heck they're trying to use over there. It's the additional, at least. Twenty-one trillion dollars on top of the twenty-one trillion we've already blown in the United States, the world's reserve currency. So I mean, this is a—I mean, this—the important people don't realize this is going on. When is this thing going to blow up? Um, you know, Greg, that's that's a great question. When when is it going to blow up? As as the uh, as the, the number of people who recognize what has truly occurred. Um, as, as that number grows, uh, I would anticipate, uh, and, and factually, uh, I'm, I'm sort of seeing re reflections of this, uh, people will move on uh, physical uh, uh, things that have utility, like precious metal. And there, there's been a great deal of activity going on just beneath, just beneath, uh, just beneath the water. It's like when you look at when you look at a duck moving across uh, water, it looks very graceful. But if you take a picture of what's going on underneath the water, or just below the water line, you see the duck uh, paddling furiously. Well, I would I would recommend to people that what's going on in the physical uh, or, or in in the in the precious metal space, uh, what we see uh, above the water line is the uh, reckless suppression of physical precious metals where where insane amounts of metal in paper form are dumped on the market on exchanges like the COMEX and the LBMA. Uh, but what's really going on beneath the waterline is that mega, mega money is uh, on, a seek, on a seek and acquire mission to acquire physical precious metal in amounts that would stagger most people. Just how much money there is in the world seeking physical precious metal. And there will come a point where this will become very evident to everybody because there will come a point when physical precious metal will be hard, will be hard if not impossible, to find in exchange for fiat currency. I, I know we started this uh, intro, uh, this, um, this, this interview out, and I, before we even talked, uh, I said, what are we going to talk about? He says, well, listen, I think the big deal is this extra 21 trillion, the extra money that's already out there. And I said, I know. And, I, you know, those some of the things that just stick with me, you said this, I don't know, a couple of years ago. I said, yeah, 
that uh, you know we've been told about you know, my supply is X and it's really going to be. I started out with this interview talking this way, and it, but it's it's the central point when you're talking about the world's reserve currency. I mean, if we were talking about the uh, pound sterling or even the euro or the yuan or any of which are not uh, world reserve currencies, uh, it wouldn't be nearly as big of a deal. But it's a big deal. And I wanted to ask you about your sources. What are your sources telling you in the background now? I always ask you this <clears throat> because people don't realize this. You, of course, you have Kirby Analytics. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Of course, you have Kirby Analytics. Uh, you're a macro e economic analyst and you're an expert in derivatives and you got lots of deep uh, uh, financial experience. I don't know if people know that or not, but you do. Uh, but you also uh, uh, arrange tonnage of gold for people, transfers of tons of gold and yep. silver for people. What are, I mean, a client, that's a very narrow universe, and this is why I asked this question. So I know a long dissertation to set up this question. I'm sorry, but people have to know why I'm asking you this, because you arrange tonnage. I don't know how many people arrange tonnage for their clients. I know you do. So what in the heck are your clients telling you that are well, buying tons of of gold, is there anything new you can reveal? Well, all all I can say is the resolve to acquire physical precious metal is growing, uh, and I'm going to say growing at a dramatic rate with the passage of time. And the uh, as I as I as I referenced just a few minutes ago, Greg, the amount of money that in the world that is seeking physical precious metal would alarm an awful lot of people if they knew the extent. Hmm. Uh, I mean, what? What kind of number are we talking about here? You're just, you're just talk. You're talking. You're talking stupid amounts of money. Are you talking about tens of billions of dollars? I don't even want to reference the amounts because people wouldn't believe it. Wow. Wow. Uh, a lot of people are thinking that uh, this fall, and I, people have thought this in the past, because fall is that magic time. A lot of people are thinking that this fall is going to be when you know it, it all comes apart. Well, it could come apart. At I mean, any time. I, well, but the other thing is too is that we have this geopolitical thing, and I want to bring that up because it's going to affect money. And your your people uh, have to be watching this circus, this failed coup. That's what it is. It's a failed coup. Now with the Bruce Orr testimony, yeah, we all everybody knew it was a phony document, and they used the phony document to fraudulently apply for warrants to spy. Other spy agencies were involved. At least the UK for sure, and uh, and uh, and Australia has come up in, in documentation. I think the other Five Eyes people were all involved to try to stop Trump. But uh, I mean, this is destabilizing. This involves foreign countries, foreign spy agencies, multiple agencies inside the United States. We could bring down the markets with uh, with a big widespread arrest. Could we not? Couldn't the markets get spooked if a bunch of people go down? And I think they will for this failed coup, this treason here in America. Absolutely, Greg. The the rest. Let's just say the rest of the world is uh, watching what's going on in America, and. A lot of them, are, a lot of people in very senior positions, are shaking their heads in disbelief with the extent of the uh, ill doings on the part of the uh, deep state and their attempt to remove Trump from power. And just so it's, people know, you're you're coming to us. Uh, you're coming to us from Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're you're actually a foreigner looking on the outside. You're looking in. I shake my head at what I see. Um, I, like I live in Toronto, Canada, Greg, and I have a great deal of exposure to U.S. media here in here in uh, in Toronto, and uh, sadly, our uh, our media in Canada is basically uh, reheats of what the mainstream press in uh, in America uh, serves up to the American people, and all I can say is it's utterly shameful. I, I got to tell you, I have Canadians uh, on my site all the time. I love Canada, incidentally. Uh, and, whoo, man, the names they call Trudeau, uh, Trudeau uh, is one of the, one of my, one of the, I hear all the time. This is from Canadians. Yeah, I, well, I mean, he is a, he is a globalist and an anti-Canadian. I mean, he's a globalist. Yeah, well, Trudeau is a, is a good name for him because I believe it's October 17th that, uh, uh, cannabis is going to be uh, uh, legal in Canada, right across the country. Um, you know, so Trudeau is a is a, is a great name. It's I very. I didn't know that. Names. 
Cannabis is, is going to be legal be nationwide exactly. in Canada? Cannabis is going to be legal nationwide in Canada? Yes, October 17th. Yeah. You can just roll up and smoke a joint. Uh, yeah, you, actually, the government is going to be selling it. Uh, or, or government sanctioned. Uh, it, you know, it's going to, there, there will be, like in Ontario, there's going to be private stores. Uh, ult ultimately, um, I think when they make it legal in Ontario on the 17th of October, uh, you're going to be able to buy it uh, legally through the mail for the first six or eight months until they put the retail distribution, more, bricks and mortar uh, retail locations in place by next spring, uh, spring of 2019. But yeah, you'll be able to sm uh, smoke uh, recreational marijuana um, absolutely anywhere in Canada as of uh, October 17 of this year. Uh, everybody's high. That's a great way to control everybody, isn't it? Well, if the, if the financial system is really gonna gonna do what I anticipated doing, maybe maybe we should all be high when when it's going down. <laughs> we, we might as well enjoy the ride, Greg. I don't mean to laugh because it's serious because of the seriousness of, of this thing is really serious. But I and I want to end up with the uh, the you know the masters of the so-called masters of the universe, and. I want to just ask, who do they think they are? I mean, yeah. it's I, 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 Trump is going at them, and uh, they, this is the first president that has challenged them. Everybody's like, "Oh, don't say anything about Google. Don't say it. They, they have a stupid search engine." Yeah, these are not these. Are, what do they make? Nothing. Greg, you know what? Uh, you know, most most people can relate to the movie The Wizard of Oz, and after after uh, Toto the dog pulled back the curtain and exposed the wizard for what the wizard really was. The wizard actually said to Dorothy, he just said, I'm not really a good wizard at all. I'm actually a lousy wizard with cheap tricks. And the masters of the universe are really no better than the Wizard of Oz. Uh, lousy wizards, uh, lousy masters with, with, with fraudulent cheap tricks that they've pulled on humanity, the likes of which humanity has never has never seen before uh has never comprehended before and is 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 very likely to be exposed in its full glory i do believe in the very near future this is why we love you rob kirby i mean you come up with words of wisdom like that the ah, wizard, just like the wizard see. of oz and he's gonna I and they're gonna be exposed it. do yeah. what well, the the and and we're going to find out at the end of the day the yellow brick road really is paved in gold. <laughs> Rob Kirby, thanks for joining us today on usawatchdog.com. A Kirby Analytics uh, is the website. Um, uh, you are uh, just one of the greats um, here on the site. People love you, uh, Kirby Analytics. I put links up for you. He's got a. You uh, tell me about your uh, your your subscription service. That's it. Tell me about uh, that. It's 145 bucks a year, and uh, yeah, it's.